Coconut Gaming. Hey there my friends, hope everybody's well. Um, I've got a new toy to show you today. It's a new airbrush. Um, it's from Spar Max and it's the Max 4. There's two versions out there. There's the Max 3 and the Max 4. The Max 4 is the 0.4mm nozzle and needle. Um, it comes with a 7mm uh, colour cup and it's got your standard 1 eighth of an inch fitting the same as Iwata uses. A um, couple of nice things about it. This brush converts from dual action to single action and it also comes with a crown cap and a cleaning brush. So let's crack it open. Let's start right on the obvious bit of the outside. It's a really nice case for storing it in. Um, if you choose to keep your brushes in their cases, not everyone does, I don't, I've got my own gun rack, um, I've got some hooks on the wall where I keep all my brushes for quick access, but if you do keep it in here, then it's certainly a nice little case. Good solid clip, and everything's kept in nice and tight. Lifts out, and now you've got your wee cleaning brush that comes with it, and a set of breakdown instructions. Everything you need is in the box. So what I'll do is I'll set the brush up and we'll have a play play with it and we can get some feedback on it. Actually, before we go on and set the brush up, I'm going to show you the difference between the single action setup and the dual action setup and show you how easy it is to change it. So, quickly explanation for those of you that don't have an airbrush and don't know the difference between single action and dual action. Dual action gives you two controls. Dual action gives you control over airflow, which is what you do when you press down. As you can see, the trigger moving. We'll just zoom in a wee bit closer for that. Press down, and that's your airflow. Pull back, and that's your paint flow. So you've got control over how much air versus paint flow throughout your actual using the brush. Okay? And that is created, that action, by this valve down here. And the, all we need to do is unscrew this. off the bottom of the brush and this is our dual action valve okay let's get the up and down motion here our single action valve as you see doesn't have that so we'll screw this in to the bottom of the brush and you now have a single action airbrush and if you look I'm pressing down, you can see the pressure forming on my finger, that doesn't go up and down. So now we don't have control over our airflow, all we have control over is our paint flow. So as we pull back, the air is shooting through the brush and it sprays our pattern. Single action is a great way to learn, I much prefer personally using dual action. Not everyone does, and it will come down to personal preferences, but the beauty of this brush is it does both. So straight out of the box, you don't need to think about should I buy a dual action, should I buy a single action, some of my friends are advising always buy dual action, other people are saying no, no, start with a single action. This little baby does both. So for the test, I'll set it up and show you it running as dual action and then we'll have a wee shot as single action, just so you can see the paint flow coming out of both options. So let's take a look at this bad boy in action. So what I'm going to just quickly demonstrate is, as I've got it set up in the dual action, when I press down here, I hopefully you can hear that, the airflow coming out of the airbrush, but what you can see is on my hand, no paint. That's because the dual actions I've explained already, down is air, back is paint. So let's start sticking some stuff down on the paper and show you an idea of the line work that we can achieve. So just starting really close to the paper, and pulling it back marginally. We can, if we want, get really quite thin line work. Or, if we want, it is possible 
for thicker dispersal and anywhere in between. Just depending on what you want to achieve. However, if you're not particularly skilled within your brush, i.e. me, what you can also use is the preset at the back here. What the preset does is, if you tighten that right up, watch this, and the trigger barely moves. So if that's too much or too little, just open it up a wee bit further, and the trigger will move to where you want it. Obviously, the further back we pull the trigger, more paint comes out here, wider the dispersal pattern. So if you're looking to do some fine controlled work, take it right down and spray with that and then you can't go past a certain line width apart from pulling further away from the actual object you're painting. So then I've adjusted the preset so that the trigger only goes back so far as you can see. That means when I'm working a bit closer I'm not going to get too wide a spray patterns, too wide a dispersal. Good tip as well is always put on your air first, then apply your paint. And if I want, I can then take it in even further and reduce further still the actual movement. Open it back up. Gives us back the full movement. Should I want to just use this to base coat something? It's easy enough to do. When you're spraying with an airbrush, what you're doing is spraying dots, as you can see. So what you're really doing is building up layer upon layer upon layer of transparency. Even though your paint's opaque, you're trying to build it up as if it's a transparent layer, bit upon bit upon bit. So, very good brush, just if you want to do your base coating. If you want to get in for closer line work, it's perfectly achievable as well. What we also have is, which we'll set up next, is the crown cap, because this is your normal standard cap. Your crown cap is slightly different and that comes in this brush as well, so we'll set up with the crown cap next and show you what that does. So that's the crown cap that comes with it. Every other airbrush I've got that I've had to buy a crown cap, sorry, every other brush I've got I've had to buy the crown cap separate, this one comes with it. If you're lucky, you can just see through that at the minute, the needle tip. What this does is it allows you to get much closer into your work but the airflow is getting dispersed. So there's my finger pressed up against the top. Not something I really advise because you can get an embolism, I've been told, um, by putting the airflow of your air compressor straight against your finger. But for this demonstration, the crown cap lets the air escape. And because of that, you can get really in close to the work to do much finer detail stuff. Also lets you drop the pressure a wee bit. This brush works at good atomization at low pressures as well, which is a good feature of it. So pressure's down about maybe 16, 18, and we've got the crown cap on. Let's go in and have a wee look at that.
So with that, I can get in much closer, still get the fine lines, but have slightly more control over those fine lines. Hopefully you can see that from the video quite clearly. So that's the two options there, crown cap without crown cap. What we'll now shoot on and do is switch over this, which is our dual action box, and put in the single action bit. Currently I've just got it connected to a quick release. Uh, I've done reviews of these in another video a long time ago, so if you want to find out more about the quick release, just look on there. But as we see, it just allows the pop on, pop off quickly off your brush if you want to do any cleaning of it, etc. Or change over to a different brush. So the first thing you're going to notice when you switch over to the single action valve and connect to your air as you hear constant airflow. That's because the way this single action sets up, you're always going to have a bit of constant airflow. Next thing you're going to notice is the trigger doesn't have any depression. You can actually lift it up a wee bit, but it doesn't make any difference. It just sits down, sits down nice and tight. So let's get using this and we'll look to see how it operates. Once again, as you can see, you can still get your really neat fine lines should be, or should that be what you require. Still absolutely achievable. As are increasing to your larger line widths all still completely achievable Just depending on what you're looking for. Another good feature of the brush I want to draw your attention to is the cup shape. The reason I want to mention that is it's so you get no paint wastage. Some of the generic brushes that are out there, you might have a bevel shaped cup at the bottom which then leads to paint pulling rather than dropping all the way down to the reservoir. The nice straight angled shape to this one means that all the paint runs straight down into the very bottom of the reservoir so you don't have any paint pulling in any part of the cup. So it's something to bear in mind um, just to try and reduce paint wastage and also to save you having to then clean areas which aren't going all the way down as often. All your paint goes to the bottom it means you get nice simple cleaning and it also means no paint wastage. As I say that's just because as you can see angled straight down and into the actual bottom of the reservoir. Something else that's worth noting that I've noticed as I've been using it, um, for an entry level brush, this brush has a really nice responsive trigger. Um, as you can see pressing down, you can just see the white of my finger and putting the pressure on, but it's a nice responsive trigger in both directions, so whether it's your airflow or whether it's your paint flow. There's no sponginess to it, it's just nice, good, responsive. I've played with other um, entry level brushes before as well and the triggers haven't always been just as responsive. Responsive triggers, again if you're new to airbrushing, is important because it allows you more fine control of how you're going to get that air or paint flow coming out your brush. Whereas a spongy one means that the brush might continue to do something after you've decided you don't want it to be putting paint down, which could end up ruining the piece you're, work ruining the piece you're working on. So it's a useful feature. And just like most other brushes, you can take off and adjust by turning this back and forward the strength of the spring. You're just putting more pressure on the spring or less pressure on the spring. It's still as responsive whether it's a soft trigger you're setting it up for or whether it's that tight trigger you're setting it up for. There's still the same responsiveness across the brush but you do have that option. 
Another thing that I should point out to you, although I can't really demonstrate, is that should you be wishing to use solvent based paints with the airbrush, it does have a PTFE um, needle packing in it, which allows for you to use your solvent based paints without any deterioration to the airbrush. So it's just something worth pointing out. Um, and another wee final thing is, it comes with a two year warranty. So again, unlike most of your generics, it's backed up by something a bit better than your, your standard one year guarantee because it's got a two year warranty with it as well from Sparmax. So hope you've enjoyed the wee review. Um, I'll do another video showing you a breakdown of the brush and seeing it taken apart um, just so you get an idea of what this one looks inside um, a wee under the hood demo. So that will come up in a couple of days time as well but thought I'd give you a wee look at how the brush is in use. Overall thoughts, like the brush, um, it's certainly better than my generic Chinese brush that I've got um, for the two main reasons is that cup shape and then the spring as well, it's also backed up by a better guarantee and better warranty and it's better, definitely better weighted than my Chinese generic as well. So overall a very competent starter brush, it's not going to be as good as your top end brushes but in your brushing you do largely get what you pay for but it is a very very good entry level brush particularly as the fact that for a beginner it will allow you either single action or dual action with the one brush that that's a very valuable feature and um, so a lot of people are intimidated by the up and down and the back and forth thinking I'll never be able to cope well it'll allow you to start off one way once you're used to that then you can progress up to the dual action and um, so good little brush do recommend it um, if you're starting off. It could be a nice little workhorse as well for just kicking about at not too much bucks if you're just looking for an extra little brush in the house as well. So yeah, good. Thumbs up from me.